Welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Kay Cote, and I am your podcast host here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, we have Aida Johnson, CEO and founder of The Happy Clean, as our guest. Today, we're going to be talking about her business, her journey to business ownership, challenges, and best practices that she's learned along the way. It's going to give you an inside scoop to what it's like to really own and operate a business. If this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop episodes like this one. Welcome to the show, Ada. It's so great to have you on. I'd love to learn a little bit about you and your business. Of course. So my name is Aida Johnson. I was born in Columbia. I came with my family to the States when I was about five years old. Um, I did live in Miami for a little bit, and then I've Grew, we came to Austin. I pretty much grew up in Austin uh, my whole life. Um, I have the best team ever. I have my husband and my daughter, four years old. They're my little family. Um, and I started my business, Happy Clean, at the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. I did that on my own up until January of 2023 when my uh, when Happy Clean was financially successful enough to let my husband leave his job. Um, and he came and joined me. He helps me with sales and development. Uh, and we've just been working away as a startup since then. Again, my business name is Happy Clean. It is a commercial cleaning company. It is local to Austin. It is female and Latina owned. Um, we provide commercial cleaning services to all commercial properties, offices, office plazas, um, big buildings, sky rise buildings, apartment buildings. Uh, we have, as of recent, expanded into professional window cleaning. We do floor scrubbing and we also do carpet cleaning. Uh, my team is made up of five office staff members, including myself and my partner. We have 12 consistent cleaners, and during one-time high-volume projects, we can contract up to 200 contractors. The best thing about Happy Clean was that I found it on a mission to help people, and that starts with my cleaners and other workers. I do want to share that story because I think that's what's made this company successful. Um, so let me share that real quick. It was, uh, it started with my mom. She planted a seed in my head. I have an accounting degree and I worked in accounting for about eight to nine years. I always wanted to help people, but in my accounting role, I was, didn't really feel like I was contributing to society. I was just in charge of one part of the job in my company because it was a very big company. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like I was online shopping the majority of the month and only really working one week of that month, I didn't really feel like I was doing much of a contribution. And I really just had this soul irking urge to help people. And I just didn't know how. So when my mom started telling me I should start a cleaning company, it got my wheels turning. The way that happened was during college, my mom was a cleaner. And during the summers, I would come back home and I would help her clean. Uh, during that time, I saw how the cleaning staff could be treated. I'm not saying all places are like this, but when you enter the workforce as a cleaner, you can be rushed, underestimated, um, treated as disposable. I have had cleaners come for me from this fear-based type of environment. Um, and so my mission is to make sure that when they're coming to me, they know that they don't need to be guarded or defensive. I'm not trying to take advantage of them. I have an open door policy. I want them to communicate any doubts, issues, uh, that I can help them resolve. My mission is to retain my cleaners by doing the open door policy, by making sure I provide them with an environment where they feel safe um, and a, sec a secure environment where I can teach them, where I can say, this is what you do in your job. I will teach you how to do that. They perform the job. They feel confident in what they do. I also pay them a fair aggressive pay wage. And with all that said, it helps reduce turnover and that helps provide quality services for our clients. So, which in turn makes our clients happy. So I have happy cleaners and happy clients and that's how Happy Clean came to be. Wow, Aida, that is an incredible story. And I love that you had such a passion and mission for making this industry 
a better place. And so kudos to you and your and your partner on developing this. And I, I just want to dive even deeper into what you've got going on. And so I'd like to hear about who do you primarily serve as a business? Like if I were to walk into a room, how would I know I was the perfect candidate for your services? Again, any commercial property. Um, I'm sure, Kay, you work out of an office so we can clean your office. Um, we we can clean apartments, uh, apartments that are vacant, apartment buildings. We clean vacant houses, any property management group, any um, big commercial plaza group that needs cleaning for multiple offices at one time and any sky rises that could be office buildings as well. Okay. That's incredible as well. And you know, it kind of um, leads me to my next question, which is what is one thing you wish people knew more about your business? Yes. So what do I, I, I want to say that we provide reliable quality cleaning services mm -hmm. um, outside of providing amazing cleaning services. I think that what really sets us apart, what's really special is the communication that we have with our clients. Mm -hmm. We respond very quickly. We really care about what service we're providing and we try to resolve and address issues in a timely manner. Um, that That is what we can provide to our clients. For our cleaners, uh, the business I feel for our, our cleaners, um, I want our clients to know this because of our mission. When you hire us as a client to us, when you hire us, you're not just giving us a job to do. You are providing an opportunity for an individual, that individual that works for us, who otherwise would be limited at another job. Mm -hmm or have zero options. At Happy Clean, we keep, we give the people who work for us not only the opportunity to generate earnings, but the opportunity to learn how to keep a book of business, how to manage, how to develop. Um, this would generally not be an option for our crews because of language barrier, because of level of education or lack of resources and knowledge that they've just never been shared. Um, I want our crews to know what it's like to have options of growth. I want them to know that they're not limited because of the circumstances that were handed to them. There's an option to grow and whether that's having their own cleaning business or just learning how to clean, they they have, there's options out there. So it's just a lot bigger than just giving us a job to do. Um, and I think that we care so much about our cleaners that any issues, anything that might have been miscommunicated or needs to be resolved. We we know all of our direct subcontractors. So if they talk to us, we'll resolve issues with them, we'll resolve issues with the clients. And I think that's what our competitors fail to do because they're usually a big box competitor. And there's really no direct com communication with subcontractors, not the way, and I don't feel the way I do it based off the feedback I get from our clients. And also because I'm not trying to be a big box store, I'm trying to just stay local to Austin and the, the community here. Well, thank you so much for deep diving into that. It sounds like you are just bringing this like extra added element to not only your clients, but to your, your cleaners and the people, people you work with and um, providing that extra level of communication as well. So that, that actually brings me to this next topic, which is, uh, you know, all business owners are kind of trying to find their way around navigating is marketing. And so I'd like to hear some of the successful practices that you've had in marketing and what is working for you. So feel free to share any marketing pursuits you have right now and what worked and what didn't. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> I feel that the pest marketing is referrals. And so when we have we have a client that appreciated our service and they refer us to another client, that client is usually similar to the original client. Um, usually when we're out there cold calling, cold selling front door to door or sending out mass emails, we just never know what we're going to end up with or if we we're going to get a response or, or the job. And so when uh, 
the referral way I know is not a marketing strategy because that's it's impossible to expand quickly on that if you're wanting to expand quickly. But as I mentioned before, that's just, that's not my plan. I just want to make sure that we get a book of clients that we can provide a good service to, that we can maintain the quality. Um, I don't want to expand too fast or too much and just lose that line of communication with our clients and the people who work for us. Just wanted to make that known. But outside of that, the referrals. Uh, for example, when I started doing commercial cleaning, I sold door to door one time. I was uh, six months pregnant. So maybe my daughter that was in me gave me that strength. I bought a bunch of Krispy Kreme donuts and was selling door to door again. And my mom was with me. She accompanied me. She, as I mentioned, was a cleaner. And I I begged her to come with me because I wanted some sort of valid valid validation that I do know how to clean. I just didn't want to go with my pregnant self door to door saying, I know how to clean and mm -hmm. I can do this for you. Uh, so my mom came with me and I don't know what I was expecting because as I said, I was in accounting before. I've never sold before. I'm not a salesperson. I thought that they might interview us or interrogate us on what cleaning liquids we used for our cleaning and our routine, but that's not what happened. <laughs> it was just more, this is the services we provide. Um, if you need us, uh, please use us. Anyways, with that said, I did about 10 apartment buildings and only one building got back to us. Mm -hmm. And from that, I, let's see, I started with that building. I probably made um, 10K on that building. And then from that one building, I got referred out and I did not do any sales. And from that one building that I got referred out to, I grew a revenue of about, God, say like 400 to 500K. That was all referral. I did not do any sales. Outside of that, the was we are in a million in revenue. Outside of that, it's been cold calling and sales. And that's what my uh, partner has helped me with. But that's why referral business is the best. It, you know, it really is a marketing tool. I think referrals, I just love that you shared that because it's, it is very important, especially with a business like yours that um, referrals are huge. So that is a cool success story. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'd like to kind of go into what is something that you faced like along your journey, you know, as the ups and downs um, as entrepreneurs that we face. What's something that you faced in your journey that you overcame, that you were able to just conquer and learn from and grow from? Um, I would have to say, yeah. So I would have to say, I, I think most, if not all entrepreneurs deal with this. We have an idea, we have a plan of what we want our business to be. But once you're in it and once you're actually doing the work and you realize maybe, oh yeah, this, this kind of target market isn't the best for me. I'm not, I'm really struggling with retaining those clients or um, the, the pay isn't, you know, it's too time consuming for what the pay is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the people who work for me don't like these kinds of jobs and it's getting hard to um, staff them. And so, you know, I have this idea of what I want, but then you kind of get into it and you start learning all these things. And I think the biggest thing that I'm actually in the middle of is learning how to pivot and not to stay too long. I need to, uh, I think once you find out something doesn't work, move on and pivot and don't force it. It should be really natural what whatever service or wh whatever your target market is that you're trying to do and and whatever business you're so whatever business you're doing. So pivoting as soon as you know something's not working is what I've learned and what I need to do. I, there is about a, gone about a full year trying to make something work that isn't working. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's in, that's crucial advice and pivoting is that, yeah, to have that ability to kind of think beyond the idea. That's so huge. That's really, really awesome that you said that. Um, where do you see your business going, say, in the next three to five years? I would say I really want to focus on commercial cleaning. I really want to focus on 
Um, my target market, again, is office buildings, office plazas, and apartment buildings. And I want those clients because those are the types of jobs that stick around for a long time. And because they stick around for a long time, it's not a one-time job, it's a recurring job. I can offer the people who work for us stability and, and their schedule. Hmm. And I, I want to help other small businesses, other small cleaning businesses develop their own business. And with that type of work, they would be able to do that. Mm, definitely that creating those skills or developing those skills in them is such a crucial role. Um, this has been a great conversation. I've absolutely loved sharing about your journey and what you're working on. And now I'd like to dive into some rapid fire questions. This is our part of our conversation where we just have, a, you know, ask a few questions and just share what the, what's on the top of your mind. Are you ready for some rapid fire? I am. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. First question is, what is the key to success for you? The key to success is putting people first and then everything else will fall into place. Hmm. And what is one piece of advice you have for other business owners? Uh, it's what I mentioned earlier. Have a plan and revisit as soon as possible. If you need to pivot, don't stay on a path that's not working. Hmm. What is a book or piece of content, could be a podcast, anything that you've taken in most recently? Crucial conversations, because I've had to have multiple ones, and it's it's been really helpful. And the last one is, if you had to choose only one area of your business you could rapidly improve tomorrow, what would it be? Allegation of duties, division of labor. Hmm. And before we get to our final question for today, I'd love to share your contact info. How can people find you? Yes. So I have, uh, we have a website. It's happy clean ATX or no, the happy clean.com. Excuse me. The Instagram is happy clean ATX. That's our handle. And then you can contact me at my number 512-964-2571. You can also email me directly at Aida, A-I-D-A at the gmail.com, at the happyclean.com. Aida at the happyclean.com. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Aida. This has been a great conversation. And my last question for you today is, what is most inspiring to you today? Um... What is most inspiring to me is empowering others. That is what's most inspiring. Well, thank you so much for this great conversation and for being a guest on the show. Thank you so much, Kay.